Hello again. Welcome to my garden tour 2.0. Well, number two, I should say. So, see if I can make this quicker than last week. Um, I believe I did this on the 9th, so it's been about nine days. I'll have to double check. But uh, I just wanted to show you the growth in a week to a week and a half. Um, and we're officially going vertical. I'm quite excited. Like, those are tied up. Those are tied up right there. And these are on their way to being tied up because, look, they're almost there. Almost to the fence. Okay. So here is one of the squash beds. And as you can see, the nasturtium that I got from the local nursery is doing pretty good. And my squashes, for the most part, are pretty happy. Like, I have a couple goofy ones that are putting up a fight, like that one. Those got planted the same day, and I don't know if something ate the seed or the top or what, but it's still trying, so it gets to live. Um, oh, aha. So, I was looking for my other seed. I guess I just found it right there. <laughs> okay. And I'm not really sure why that one's super light, but this is supposed to be spaghetti squash, so. I'm super excited about that one. Let's see what this one is. Burpless cucumber. Woo! -hoo. We should have quite a few of those. So some of my beans didn't sprout and I went digging around and I put new seeds in. I figure what the heck, why not, right? Some's better than none. And I found that some had actually curled underground in the dirt. So we'll see how it does. You can tell it hasn't been exposed to sun before. And that looks like a nasturtium seed. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. But uh, I went through and I replanted some seeds to see what would happen, see if I could get some more happy plants. And um, yeah, so there's the bean section. It's my first year doing beans. Well, I did beans last year, but I kind of let them go because I didn't know what to do with them. So this year I have to learn what to do with them. Um, so I also put some um, Elysium in little pots throughout and then obviously you guys saw that one last time if you watched the last video and then I needed more flowers so we have delphinium there next year I'll plan accordingly and just put a whole bunch of flowers out here but here's the tomato and pepper bed so as a reminder all but one of these are sweet peppers and those are all indeterminates in this row and I put stakes until they get a little taller just so I have something to lean on because you can see how much wind there is already and it's two o'clock in the afternoon and about three o'clock we get pretty bad winds every day so might as well help them out right so um, these actually got put in the ground all the way down to the base soil level so they're actually they're not just a foot eh, 18 inches tall they're 18 inches tall plus the 10 inches down so um, I did pick this one up at the local nursery. It has its own little baby. And I've been coming out every few days. Um, I accidentally cut the top of this one off. So I let a sucker go, and now the sucker is taking over as the new top. So I'm super excited about that. Tomatoes are very resilient. I will give them that, because we had a freeze, and some got happy, and some did not. And it, it skipped plants in this particular bed. Like it took, see this poor pepper? It froze. But it's still alive and it's still kicking. So I cut off some of the ends that were, you know, upset. <laughs> and I dug a couple up and I put them elsewhere. So those they're actually still fighting. Everything's still fighting elsewhere. So I have buds, but nothing open. Oh, I got an open one. We'll see if they pollinate. That one pretty much shot up pretty darn quick. So I'm excited. Um, here goes the one pepper that's not. A sweet pepper is one of these three because it said uh, sweet Georgia peach or sweet peach or something jalapeno or sweet peach and so I assumed it was a sweet pepper whoops don't go based on the name 
And so in order to keep airflow going, I've been taking the bottoms off, especially since I want them to get above to the remesh. So that's, I'm just keeping the airflow going. And then So all of this side is hot peppers and mostly indeterminants with like three or four determinate tomatoes. Next year this is going to be all indeterminants and I think determinants are going to come over here to this bed because I actually I had extra tomato plants and I didn't want to waste them so I went ahead and stuck them over there but I'll get to that in a second. So like this is one I got from the local nursery, Brad's Atomic Grape and they looked super neat at the store. And this plant is actually super leggy and it's been in the ground for about a week and I don't know why I think it's adjusting so that's good um, some of these peppers aren't doing too good and I think that's my habanero that I did from my own seed and I think uh, next year I'm getting a heating mat for seed starting but you can see my tomatoes are really working hard they're 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 taken off and I, I think I was over watering. I was watering 20 minutes a day, twice a day, and now I'm doing 30 minutes once in the morning and uh, the tomatoes seem to be happier with that so far. So, and then some of these, like this is a whole new pepper to me. I got this after one of my other peppers froze. So we'll see how it goes. <sighs> and then <laughs> I did have some, I sold all my tomato cages in my yard sale and I happen to have a couple left. So this one is attached to my greenhouse and I'll probably put a stake in it later to help solidify it a little better. But I still have one hole left. One plant gets to live there and I haven't decided which one because it's all square foot gardening. And my okra froze and I don't think it's coming back. I think, yeah, I think my okra's done. But luckily I planted, those are all baby okras. And then, oh! Hey, check that out, guys. I had to replant one because it uh, didn't sprout. Well, the newest ones are sprouting. So there it is. That one's replacing that. I bought another uh, type of okra, and it's I'm trying it in a Ziploc to see what happens. But um, it'll probably end up replacing that one. And then we have my eggplants. And my eggplants actually were in the freeze, too. So what are you? I don't think you're a friend. Go away. Go eat something else. Okay. So, some of these look worse than others. Like, for example, look. This one definitely froze. But, I have new growth. So, I'm letting it go. Same with this one. New growth after a freeze. So, I'm letting them live. I don't want to dig them up if I don't have to. And then, um... Another tomato cage I kept that I didn't get rid of is also attached to the sidewall. Oh, these three little squares for square foot will be carrots. Um, some Roma tomatoes. That, I believe, is what I just picked up. Oh, nope, yellow pear. I picked it up somewhere. Oh, from the local city sale. So that one's pretty happy. Um, more beans. I had to replant a few. I think some of them were last year's seeds. So... My little tomatillo, if you've ever grown tomatillos, they get kind of crazy, so I put it on the end there, and then I have little babies there, and then if I need to attach them, I've got a pole there, since I don't have the plastic up here yet. So there is, oh, and then, I don't remember if I had that new shade cloth up last week, but this is a 40% shade cloth, and I have it zip-tied in several places to keep the movement down. Less movement, less tearing, right? So, we'll see, but, um... So far, so good. All right, I'll take you to the other garden. So, here's the status of my first herb garden. That basil is pretty happy. That basil is pretty happy. Actually, that's an offshoot of that one. When I repotted that one, I pulled some out and put it in its own pot, and that's probably going to get an upgraded pot here pretty soon. <sighs> so we'll see how it goes. I pulled a bunch of my radishes because they're bolting. It's getting too hot too quick. So here's what I pulled out. That's the biggest one I got. So I'll go home, go inside and clean them all. And I just pulled those about a half hour ago. Um, and then I'm letting the ones that are still here. I kept the ones with, with flowers so that I could get seeds. 
because seeds mean more radishes. So figure what the heck. Can't really salvage them right now anyway. So um, garlic and onions are doing pretty good. It'll be soon that I get to pick, pull those out. My lavenders are doing pretty good. And then this table has stuff that um, bloomed late in the greenhouse. For example, I had some tomatoes that decided to join the party. Um, and so they, now they're upgraded from the peat pellets to this. Um, if anybody knows what this stuff is, that would be helpful. This shot up out of my new garden. And I don't really know what it is. To me, it looks like it could be sunflower seeds. Could be sunflowers. There's more over in that other garden, but I pulled out this whole handful. Um, this is one of the tomatoes that froze. My pink bumblebee is not trying too hard, as you can see. But Mr. Stripey is. These are ones that I dug up carefully and stuck back in the dirt. In, in a pot, basically. And then some other late bloomers. And then lemon spice jalapeno is one of the ones that froze, but it is trying, so I'm letting it go. Same with this one, new growth. These are all ones that just were not happy out there. So there's the work table. And then we have some volunteers in our old compost pile. This is where I stole all the dirt from this year. So we'll see what happens. And last on the trip of our little tour is the shady garden. See how nice and shady it is? And then not shady. Okay. So lots of squash in here. We eat a lot of squash, what can I say? Um, I did little nasturtium plants here too. And then that's the chicken run. So it goes all the way around. I gotta do a video on all that for you guys. Actually, I have videos, so I gotta put all that up too. But uh, pallet chicken run, it's protecting my garden. Okay, so I have nasturtium, and there's a little nasturtium over here. A volunteer there, for probably from the compost. More squashes, a bok choy that bolted. Yellow crook neck. Oh, there's a new baby. Oh, that looks like a zephyr. Huh. Thought it was a yellow crook neck. Guess we'll find out. But that little tip right there looks like a zephyr. So maybe it got cross pollinated. I don't know. But the pea, peas that got in two months late, they're trying. So if nothing else, see, look, we got some peas. We're starting to get a little angry though, I can tell. That one's super happy for the moment, but it's gonna change. And something came out here and ate my new leaf. Okay, so more squashes, the nasturtium seed that I stuck in. Everybody said to notch them. I didn't notch them and they're actually doing pretty good. So That's dinosaur kale. It all got eaten by the birds, but now it is um, doing okay. And then another, another, another nasturtium seed. Nasturtiums are supposed to be really good for anti-squash bug. However, I just found out they're also very aphid friendly. So uh, we'll have to see how it goes with aphids. But um, And then I stuck, I think last week I told you guys this one was looking sad. Although it might still be trying. It's supposed to be a honey rock melon pulled out the tag the other day so some more squashes over here because I had some open spaces why not maximize right and that's the corn bed I don't know if you guys can see with the shade but all the little babies I have a lot of amendments to do to the soil by next year I think which includes a lot more um, organic material like all this straw getting tilled in. So overall, everything's doing pretty good. And then also, guys, check this out. Look what I did. I took my, my drip and I added a connector and I created a drip for the chickens. <laughs> so at least they'll get some, you know, cool water every day. Not every day, but, you know, or they'll get cooler water midday. And so... There's a bok choy that bolted. I should probably just pull that up because there's not much else we can do with it. And then those are sunflowers. My artichoke is there. 
And that sunflower is a very happy sunflower. So, and my rhubarb is looking sad. I went ahead and stuck a little drip on there too, just so it had some extra water, because you see what it does in the middle of the sun. So, oh, and by the way, guys, that stuff was $3.99, the little foil tape, and my stuff's getting eaten less. At some point, I will run a string across the top of here and get a couple more going diagonal, but in the meantime, this stuff's working okay as far as keeping my stuff alive. So, oh. Do you guys see the babies? I have babies. There's one, there's two, where's number three? That one's so awkward looking. <laughs> I think she's blocking the other one. Okay guys, well, I tried to keep it shorter and of course I failed. So, you know, I like to talk and I get excited about my plants. <laughs> so, there you have it, garden tour. Number two.